Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. In this video we'll be making a set of handscrew clamps. This is a simplified version of the store-bought type, which still works well and is very inexpensive. Start by attaching a block of wood to the end of one of your saw stools. We need to add this so that we can use the tenon saw on the saw stool. Next, turn the saw stool onto its side and drill a 10mm hole through the leg. We'll use this hole as a work holding fixture while cutting the threaded rod, since we don't have a bench or vise yet. That first hole hit a nail in the saw stool, so I had to drill a second one. Flip the stool over and drill a 12mm hole in the other side. This second hole is also a work fixture, for our bigger threaded rod. Now mark and cut out the clamp jaws and handles from some suitable timber. You can find a link to the free plans for this project in the video description. This wood is salvaged from some old furniture and needs to have the old glue removed. Measure and mark the hole locations on the clamp jaws as shown in the plans. Do this by marking a line all the way around the jaw at each hole location. If you've done this right, the lines should meet each other on the opposite side. Then mark the two hole locations on each jaw. Use your drill alignment jig to make a pair of 5mm pilot holes in each of the jaws. Get the drill started, then use the jig to align the drill straight. As you can see, this is an effective way to drill a perpendicular hole through the jaw. A drill press is a better way, and you should definitely use it if you have one. Next, draw diagonal lines across the handle pieces to mark their centres. Unfortunately we can't use the jig to drill these, so just do the best you can. Use a 10mm spade bit to enlarge the holes in the handles. Check that your threaded rod fits and that the hole is lined up well enough in the handle. We'll be fitting nuts on opposite sides of the first jaw. To do this we need to drill rebate holes the same size as the nuts. I made a mistake and drilled the first rebate hole with a 12mm diameter instead of 16, but I was able to fix it. These holes are only drilled as deep as the thickness of the nuts. Now switch to a 10mm drill bit and drill the holes all the way through. You can drive the nuts into the rebates with a hammer if you want, but putting them in place with a spanner is a more controllable method. Use a washer on the side that doesn't have a rebate. Then use a spanner to turn the nut on the side with the washer. That finishes the first jaw, now we'll start on the second one. 
Drill the pilot holes through the second jaw using the alignment jig. Then use a 12mm bit to drill a hole halfway through for the hole at the end of the jaw. This hole needs to be on the inner surface of the jaw. Switch to a 10mm bit and drill the middle hole all the way through the jaw. This hole will have a cleaner finish if you drill in from both sides of the jaw. That completes the jaws, so now we'll start on the metal work. Measure and mark the threaded rod as shown in the plans. Our saw stool stop block won't hold the threaded rod securely enough to cut it with the hacksaw. So we need to use a different way. Turn the saw stool around and use that hole we drilled earlier as a work fixture. Use a nut and washer on either side of the saw stool leg to hold the rod firmly. Now you'll be able to saw the threaded rod to length without any trouble. Next, turn the saw stool around and thread a piece of 12mm rod in the bigger hole. Then use a big nail as a centre punch to put a dimple in the end of the rod. Use a 5mm bit in your drill to make a hole about 2 to 3mm deep. Then switch to a 10mm drill bit and drill out a concave in the end of the rod. It might be best to use two nuts on the rod for this part. Put the saw stool back on its feet and saw off the end of the rod. I didn't frame this shot very well, sorry about that. The cut off piece will be hot, so hold it with your pliers. This piece of rod will fit in the 12mm hole at the end of the second jaw. If you don't include it, then you'll punch a hole all the way through the jaw the first time you tighten the clamp. Now use your file to remove the sharp ends from your threaded rod pieces. Next, nail two strips of wood onto the top of the saw stool. This will help us to hold the clamp handles while we shave off their corners with a chisel. Giving the handles this octagonal cross-section makes them more comfortable to use. Later in this course we'll be making a mini lathe and we'll use it to improve these handles even further. You can also use your chisel to remove the sharp edges from the ends of the handles, or use sandpaper if you prefer. Now we'll mix some epoxy glue to attach the handles to the rods. First glue the button into the clamp jaw. Then glue the threaded rods into the handles. Once the epoxy is dried, we can assemble the clamps. The longer rod goes through the middle holes on the clamp jaws. We need some way to make sure that this jaw will pull outwards when the clamp is unscrewed. The simplest way to do that is by using two nuts on the other side of the jaw. This method is quick and easy, but you won't be able to fully close up the clamp. 
Alternatively, you can use a single nut and glue it in place with epoxy. This will give a smaller closure gap, but it will still be the width of one nut. A third option is to drill a hole through the rod and use a cotter pin. Use your big nail as a centre punch again. Then use a 2mm drill bit to make the hole through the rod. These small drill bits snap very easily, especially when they break through the far side of the rod. Luckily I was able to save this part by punching the broken drill bit out with that big nail. I won't show the whole process, there was far too much swearing for a G-rated channel like this. Assemble the clamp with a cotter pin. Then wind it into the nut embedded in the other jaw. Now wind in the other handle. Put a rubber band around the back end to hold the clamp together and it's ready to use. Use this two-handed technique to wind the clamp in and out. To use the clamp adjust the middle handle first then fully tighten the rear handle. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.